Greetings uh, from our home in Princeton, Illinois. It's good to uh, see you here this evening. Welcome to our Sunday evening Vespers for May 16th, 2021. What a wonderful day and what a wonderful week. The rain is going to continue all week, I guess. I suppose my weeds will be soft enough to pull out of the garden sometime this week. Uh, so I guess that's a plus. Hello, Jared. Good to see you. Hope you're feeling better. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 although it's light out, it's actually, if you notice, there's kind of a lightness to the sky, and it's 9 o'clock, so our day is getting longer and longer. It'll be 10 o'clock uh, one of these days, and it'll still be light. Uh, I guess that just means we stay up longer. Hello, Donna. Hello, Aaron. Good, Good to know, Jared's better today. He wasn't feeling that well. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, but with the, uh, with the rain, even though it was fairly warm, it's kind of chilly. I've got my, uh, shawl on today, my prayer shawl this evening. I have two prayer shawls, one at church and one here. I think the one at church I got from one of the, uh, uh, Lutheran women. We had our retreat when uh, I first came to Ohio, uh, the Synod Retreat for the women, uh, Lutheran Church women. And uh, somebody from that group gave me a prayer shawl. You'll wear it. It reminds you, of, uh, gives you energy to pray, gives you uh, insight to pray. This one here I got, I think, I think, uh, Linda Robinson, Linda, or Linda Berry, excuse me, Linda Berry got this, uh, knitted that for quite a few of the pastors that she knew in Princeton. So thank you, Linda Berry, for that. Uh, it is nice. It kind of kind of goes over my shoulders and keeps me warm. So, good to have you all here. I guess it uh, looks like we got a nice group. I think we'll start with our devotions. As always, we gather together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Good uh, evening, Carol. Good evening, Dennis. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. This will be our last uh, evening vespers for the Easter season uh, for our litany. And we'll go back to the general litany uh, when, next Sunday. So uh, again, uh, we're on page 310 in your ELWs, or you can just say Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Or maybe do it with a little more pizzazz. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. That's better. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We are illumined by the brightness 
of his rising. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Death has no more dominion over us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all, help us to pause and wonder with delight at all you have made. Open our hearts to see the evidence of your presence and your salvation and all that surrounds us. Amen. Our devotions today come from our portals of prayer, backwards for you. Oh, gladly, right ways for me. It's from Hebrews. I love the book Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is anonymous. Uh, nobody's sure who wrote it, but, but the theology of it seems to be somewhat Paulian, uh, as it was attributed to Paul in maybe the early to mid church. But uh, it could have been Apollos, who was one who uh, uh, was with Paul during his journey but it's certainly written after Paul's death. Uh, and what's what I like about Hebrews is it ties together the Old Testament and the New Testament. It talks about both and how Scripture and God's plan is seamless from the day of creation and the fall of man through, and women too, you're not going to escape this sin, from from the fall of Adam and Eve through the Israelites and all the way to Jesus' time. And after Jesus rose, we celebrated Ascension today. Thursday was Ascension Thursday. So Hebrews gives us that broad view that uh, that isn't two books. Uh, Old Testament and New Testament is one seamless book, one story of God's salvation for God's people, first for the Jews and then for the rest of us, the Gentiles. Our devotion says, but exhort one another every day as long as it is called today that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You see, back when the Israelites were in slavery to uh, the Egyptians, building pyramids in Moses' time and before Moses' time, God saved them. God brought them out of their bondage, out of slavery. Moses led them into the wilderness. God parted the Red Sea. Whoop, I didn't mean to shake the table. Get excited. I talk about scripture. God parted the Red Sea. And the Jews, the Hebrews were able to go through and it closed in on the uh, Egyptians, Egyptian soldiers who were pursuing. God provided water. God provided bread in the form of manna each morning. God provided even quail at times. And yet, the Israelites failed to obey, trust, and love God with all their hearts. They were backsliders. They fell into sin. And although God afflicted them, not to punish them necessarily, but to bring them back, God never abandoned them. God loved the people, the Hebrews, the Jews, and he still does. And he gave them grace. He loved them unconditionally, knowing that they would fall, knowing that they would need be in need of forgiveness to restore them. Hi, Mark. Hi, Wilma. Good to have you here from the Northland. So, uh, yes, God loved 
the Hebrews, even though they, they were sinners. And though you and I have been miraculously saved by Christ, by the cross of Jesus Christ, by his blood, by his suffering, by his wounds, we have been healed. We have been freed from bondage to the penalty of sin. Yet, we too are backsliders. We too have hardened our hearts and not loved, trust, and obeyed God like we should. It starts out slowly and subtly. Maybe somebody says something that just doesn't strike us right. And we become hurt. And pretty soon that hurt turns to anger. And that anger turns to hatred towards that person. Or maybe somebody does something that we thought was our job. And we get resentful. And that resentment turns to jealousy. And again, that turns to hate. Or there could be many other sins that we fall into. And because we're good Christians, because in our baptism we receive the Holy Spirit, we hear the word of God in our heads, in our hearts, in our conscience, and it speaks to us. And it afflicts us like it afflict, afflicted the Jews in the wilderness. It causes our conscience to feel guilt, to be hurt. And we sometimes resent God for it. And even our brothers and sisters in Christ may say, well, Gene, I noticed that such and such is happening in your life and I love you. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to tell you that I've noticed that. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? And sometimes we turn our backs on them. We say, hey, I can handle this. There's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with me. And yet there is. There's something wrong with each and every one of us. It's called sin. And we sin constantly. And guess what? God forgives us. God loves us just like he loved the Jews. We are part of his plan, his plan for salvation, to be a light to all the nations. And because of that, God makes us new each and every day. I talked about that today, about being a new creation every single day. We realize that mostly when we are in unity with each other, with other Christians who can help us, who can pray for us, even when we don't know that they're praying for us. That strengthens us. And we can be in unity then with Christ because if we're not uni in unity with each other, we cannot be one in Christ. And if we are not one in Christ, we cannot be one with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Just like the shalom, they go hand in hand. We can't have one without the other. And we most often are one in Christ and one with each other when we worship together, when we pray together, when we sing together, when we do devotions together. That brings us into unity. And we know that even though we sin, we know that God loves us dearly. He loves us so much that he sent his only son to die for us. How's that for love? Our faith is built up through hearing the word of God, from being with each other and being with Christ. 
Let's pray. The bottom of uh, page, page Sunday, March 16th. <laughs> Lord, you know the sins that threaten to lead us astray. May our unity in Christ protect us against these heart hardening dangers. In Jesus' name, amen. I need a drink of water. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy God, we thank you for your church, which gathers each Sunday, the day you've set aside as our holy day, the day that Christ rose, that conquered death, that we may live without fear of dying, because we know that though we die, we will live forever. Lord, we thank you for each and every congregation that we all belong to. Lord, I'm especially thankful for the congregation at First Lutheran in Ohio, their love for each other, their love for me, but especially their love for you, God. We ask that you use us to change the world one person at a time, one city at a time, one state at a time, one country at a time, till the whole world knows of your love and lives as one with you and with each other. We pray for those who are suffering in sin right now, who are trapped by their sin and cannot find a way out. Lord, help them to know that in Christ their sins are forgiven, their chains are cut free, they no longer are dragging behind them, and that we wake each day, wrapped, not in this green shawl, but in a white robe, the white robe of righteousness given to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Ah, amen. It was good to be with you tonight. Uh, and uh, hope to see you all tomorrow at uh, 9 p.m. also for our regular devotions. Uh, now let's uh, all pray Luther's evening prayer together. We we'll give you thanks, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I've done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Hey, Marianne, it's good to see you here. Good to see you up and about. Uh, glad to know that you're doing better too. Now, let's all go to sleep peacefully, knowing that God watches over us through his angel that he's, uh, that he's appointed to guard over us. And let us wake in the morning refreshed, cleansed, and ready to do God's will. Because God loves you, and so do I. Good night.